know you want to feel good, but what we want to help you come to a decision about in these hours that we are together today, it would be so helpful for you if you would not spend so much time calibrating to those around you. And instead you would calibrate to your inner being. So it goes like this. I don't give a rip what you think. <laughs> That's sort of how that goes because if they're in harmony with you, then you feel supported. But if they're not, then you feel attacked and really they are irrelevant. What they think about you is irrelevant. It's only what you think about what you think they think that is relevant. <laughs> what they think doesn't matter to your calibration. If you know what your source to which you are wanting to calibrate is. Now we've been talking with you a long, 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 long time. And we've told you that story in lots of different ways. But today, as we're moving along, you're going to hear it and feel it and know it in a different way. Because while you do seek harmony with others, and we want that, of course, for you, we don't want you to make a habit of looking for that alignment in places that aren't stable. And if you're looking for it in circumstances or events or other humans, it isn't stable. And then that confuses you. So you jump through this hoop and you jump through this hoop. When you come to think that getting the approval of others around you is what makes you live happily ever after, then they all have a big responsibility to you from your point of view that they're not going to keep up with, not even close. And so when you get it where your strength is, where your clarity is. You may have heard us say, because we say it often that one who's connected to source energy, we've called that the stream, the vortex, your source, your inner being. You sometimes want to call it God. One who's connected to that eternalness of you is more powerful than millions who are not. And yet most people are gathering together in groups, trying to get their strengths from the cooperation and agreement of other humans around them. And if that's the world you're living in and that's the game you're playing in, then we get it that you'd want to be part of a big group who agrees with you, a loud group, an influential group. We get it that that would seem more productive and more valuable to you than to be affiliated with a small group that seems to have no power blundering around and not knowing what they're doing. But we want you to understand that there is no comparison to your alignment with this source energy that is you to even the largest, most influential group of humans that you might find in agreement with you on some points. It's like the difference between a firecracker and an atomic bomb. That's not even an accurate enough explanation of the bigness of the value and the power of you connecting with your source energy. So you came into this body knowing that you would experience the variety and contrast of this magnificent balanced environment so that you brilliant genius, blessed creator that you are could come to your own conclusions from where you stand as you move along of what you prefer now. Now what do you prefer? Now what? Now what? Given what I know and who I am and where I'm standing, now what do I prefer? What do I want now? And of course that comes often from knowing what you don't want. When you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. And we want to just say at the outset here that if you sort of don't want something, then you sort of do want something. It's proportionate. If you really don't want that, then you really do want this. In other words, the wave on either side of this equation is equivalent in terms of power and bigness. When you really, 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 really want something, then your belief that you can't have it or it hasn't come yet is really uncomfortable to you. If someone called you on the telephone and said, hello, you don't know me. I'm just calling to tell you that I will never call you again. You would say, good to know but you wouldn't care but if someone you care about says that to you then you feel strong negative emotion because that big wave has another big wave does that make sense to you so we want you to feel the power of your creation you said as you made the decision to come into this physical body 
I will explore and I will personally decide what the improvement from my perspective is. And as you sift through all that is around you, you launch all of these rockets of desire. And what we most want you to hear is that when you launch those rockets, when you send that wave forth, your inner being, who is the you of you of you of you of you, who is the largest, emphatic, most important, eternal part of you, receives that request and becomes that vibrational factor. And all cooperative components are gathered by the powerful law of attraction. And your point of attraction is under why the only question is what are you in your humanness doing about this new creation that you've set forth? Are you relaxed and allowing yourself to move in the direction of it? Or are you noticing it hasn't happened yet and pinching yourself off from it? Are you calibrating to what it means? Are you calibrating to the freedom and the clarity of it? Or are you nitpicking over the details of it that have not yet manifested in your garage or in your wherever? So as we move forward here today, we'll be talking about this calibration business and it's everything, but it's nothing more than what you already know in that the law of attraction is a powerful thing. Now just sit with that for a moment. The law of attraction is a powerful thing. It's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction. And you are source energy. You are love, you are blessed, you are known, you are adored. And when you sink with that part of you, you are powerful. But when you find some, from our point of view, ridiculous excuse to pinch yourself off from the wholeness of who you are by nitpicking too long in a step one part of the equation of knowing what you don't want, then that empty feeling that you feel in the form of a negative emotion that you call frustration all the way to despair is your indicator that your attention, your focus upon whatever it is you are focused upon is not in agreement. It's not calibrated to the focus that your inner being has about it. And in this opposite or opposing calibration, you have factored yourself out of that point of attraction. And now you are in a different point of attraction. Does that make sense to you? That's what negative emotion is. That's what it is every time. Negative emotion is your indicator that you are attracting without your true power, that you are attracting in opposition to who you really are. If you are mean, that's what it means. If you are angry, that's what it means. If you feel lonely or lost, that's what it means. You, because it's attraction, and by the thoughts that you are choosing to think, are disallowing you to be part of the you that is so very different from that. So we get it why we really understand why in your physical form where you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch why those things are attractive to you, why you want to give your attention to them. We get it why you calibrate to conditions. You can see them and hear them and smell them and taste them and touch them. And you can blog about them and talk about them and read about them and join other groups who are doing the same thing about them. We get why you're calibrating to conditions. They're vivid. They are vivid. They're what you want. You are a creator. You are a manifester. You are a powerful creator. You are here to turn thoughts to things. So when you look at all those things that have once been thoughts that are now are things, you think they are things that matter because they're things and they're true because they exist. And therefore you think they deserve your attention, but we want to ask you, do they? Do they deserve your attention if they cause that empty feeling in the pit of your stomach? Because in focusing upon them, you have focused yourself. You have calibrated yourself out of the range of your true source, your true love, your true power. Do those things matter that much? Well, now, sometimes as you're sifting and sorting, oh, there are so many things of a physical nature. There are so many people in situations. There are so many things. There are so many manifested things that 
calibrate you to the whole of who you are there's beauty all around you there are loving people all around you there are wonderful things all around you we're not saying ignore them we're saying calibrate to the best of them calibrate to the positive aspects of them calibrate to the parts of them that you want to be the basis for your point of attraction but we are also saying don't count on them because the best of them will let you down every single time because it's not their job to be your point of calibration you have an inner being for that you have a source energy for that you have that non-physical part of you who said you go forth and mix it up in the physical world and discover things that could be more and could be better for you and all that is and when you find them and you're gonna find them by finding the absence of them often first you're gonna calibrate to the absence of them and you're gonna launch a rocket of desire about the presence of them and you and others like you are going to create a vibrational reality that is the future experience of mankind and to the degree that you at any point in your humanness calibrate yourself to that vortex then that is your world now you don't have to wait for one other person to catch on you don't have to teach the world because you don't need big numbers for this you need calibration you don't need everybody to get it and everybody to do it in order for you to be calibrated to your power and your clarity and your pleasure and your you-ness you see I'm just so thankful for being here. Today's my first ever live event of yours. Somebody asked me next, when I was sitting there, uh, have you been to the show yesterday? Then I said, actually, I just saw her yesterday on YouTube. So, so my question is, actually, um, my life is amazing. So I've been like uh, focusing on uh, so many other things like you know healing and all that stuff everything happens naturally but uh, my question is to add to somebody who was here from McKinney so how do I make a billion dollars by wanting it and believing it just the way you said billion made it sound unlikely <laughs> made it sound too amazing to even consider it was like the difference between knowing and belief how can I make a billion dollars? <laughs> Sounded a little like that. Did it feel like that? Not really. It's like I, I see the visions of it, like, you know, everything happening and everything aligning. But I think I'm in a rush to, like, you know, hit that number. Let us give you some things that will help you here. We're just going to make a series of statements and don't try to memorize them. Just take them in. Let them wash over you. One who's connected to this stream of non-physical consciousness is more powerful than millions who aren't. You can't even stack up those comparisons in any meaningful way. Esther can't even find accurate words to describe the differences in the power and therefore the productivity of that energy stream in comparison with the action and the way most people are approaching life. It's just really, really big. Through your life experience, even before you got here, you were streaming energy and you've streamed equivalency of billions and billions and billions and billions of, if you want to call them dollars, you could call them vibrational credits into your vortex. Energy, it's like, what would you pay? How would someone accurately calculate it and charge it? and get it from you how do you pay for your fair share of the sunlight that you personally falls on your body every year as you divide the value of that up by the billions on your planet how do you calculate that of course it's a ridiculous question there's no point in calculating it because there's nobody asking you to pay it but still it is an energy that comes to you that is separate and apart from money that is of enormous value to you we're just trying to get your thoughts to loosen up just a little bit to begin to explore vibration and feel about it like you do about money resources resource money resource clarity resource energy resource 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 so now we want to throw a couple of statements in it's as easy to create a castle as a button because the process is the same want it and don't doubt it 
Well, the button, obvious. Want a button, don't want your pants to fall down. No point in doubting that there's buttons everywhere. Seems like a silly question. Castle button, castles might seem more like the billion dollar thing, harder to find and harder to acquire, but they are not. The point that we want to express in a way that you can take it in is that if this time and space has the wherewithal to inspire within you a desire, then it's in the vortex and it's a done deal. Therefore, this time and space has the inspired impulses and wherewithal to deliver the goods. The key is to not demand it to be given to you instantaneously, although it could, but the key is to allow yourself to let it come. Here are the key words in perfect accordance with your ability to allow it in. So it isn't the bigness or the smallness of the request. It's the openness or closedness of your willingness to allow it or expect it. So how do you expect big things? Well, by expecting smaller things and acknowledging them. But the thing is about all the things that you consider small or that you take for granted, like the sunlight, you don't have any natural resistance to them. And so as they come, they come easily. And therefore you don't know you're doing it. Because you associate, we're not just saying you, we're saying most humans associate receiving with struggle. And it's the opposite. The struggle makes it harder and slows it down. It's the absence of the struggle that lets it in. So if we can convince you that that abundance exists and we can help you find some way of talking about it and feeling about it, that doesn't block it from you letting it in. It's like it's raining down around you, but you've got an umbrella up because you've been taught by others. Some of them are very well-meaning and some of them are very controlling, but there are a lot of people that need you to believe that you need to work for them in order to have money or that you need to struggle in order to have money. And none of that is true. You just have to want it and believe it. That's all. Want it and believe it. That's all. Wayne Dyer wrote a book when you believe it you'll see it and of course he was playing with the idea that people say well i'll believe that when i see it and he says you'll see it when you believe it well i'll believe it when i see it well you gotta believe it before you see it with your physical senses you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch but that's after it's manifested that doesn't do you any good that's after it's manifested you got to feel it in the vortex you got to know the difference between happiness and sadness and love and hate. You got to pay attention to the way your thoughts feel and you got to practice being in the receiving mode, the receiving mode, the receiving mode. And when you're in the receiving mode, we promise you everything that's in your vortex. And there's a whole lot there because you've been putting it there for a long, long time. When you're in the receiving mode, what's in your vortex flows into your experience. And it's so delicious to watch the cleverness of the universe's ability to inspire you to the thoughts and the actions and the impulses that help you to enjoy it as it is unfolding. This thought leads to this and this thought leads to this and this thought leads to that rendezvous and that thought leads to that rendezvous and that thought leads to that and that thought leads to that and all of it's feeling good along the way. It's not desert and thirsty and desert and thirsty and desert and thirsty and desert and thirsty and oasis. You can't have an unhappy journey on your way to a happy ending. It doesn't go like that. It's happy, 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 happy. You see? Okay. Uh, how do you explain, like, you know, so you hit a number, like, you know, maybe a million, two million, five million, whatever, and then you hit there and then you're looking for the next number and then suddenly it just drops back down to whatever tens of thousands. I mean, I'm just talking like dollar values because I guess everybody can associate themselves with money as the Well, this is the easiest way to explain this. We are not ever suggesting that there is not compensation for action. You told enough of something from one place to another, somebody's going to pay you for it. And so people have become pretty efficient in their ability to gather through their actions. But we're talking about this exponential, what you want to call quantum leap. We're talking about accessing this energy that creates worlds. Whether you're talking about a 10,000 or a million, it's all mediocrity in comparison with what's accessible through your vortex. 
So the way we would explain it is that someone was more hopeful and they allowed the million in and then they got possessive of it and let it get away. When people get guarded, you're not guarded about a million dollars before you have it. And so in their free abandon, they weren't guarded about anything. They just found something that was fun to do. And in their attention to it, often it's just falling in love. We'll do it for you. Then they began letting in what they hadn't let in for a while. And once they let it in, then sometimes they're influenced by others. Hey, you better watch out for that. And then they get guarded and then it doesn't last. Everything can be explained by the thought that a person is thinking and indicated by the way that they feel as they're thinking the thought no exceptions whatsoever no exceptions do you believe us when we say that if this time and place has inspired you to a desire then it can deliver it if you really believe that but then there's another factor how is your belief affected well your belief is affected in part by what others say around you you might believe something until your mother reminds you of what she's always believed. And when she reminds you of what she's always believed, your belief may waver for a moment. You see what we're getting at. Or you may believe that it's possible, but not for you because you feel unworthy. But you don't have to consider all of that, you know? We can make this really complicated because there's this in the vortex and there's all these routes to it and your inner being knows what they all are. You just gotta be in the right mood at the right time and you can just go crazy trying to do that. Or you can just decide, I'm gonna be as happy as I can be as often as I can. That's it. I'm just gonna be as happy as I can be as often as I can. Which means when I'm complaining about somebody and I feel that tug in my stomach, I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna say, my inner being has a different opinion of that and me complaining about that person is depriving me of my billions. What? It's not on the same subject. I wasn't complaining about money. I was complaining about his dog pooping in my front yard. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what your reason for pinching yourself off from the well being that is all lined up for you. Just like it doesn't matter which happy stick you pull out that puts you in a state of allowing. Find something to be happy about as often as you can and watch everything that you put into your vortex come into your experience. Yeah. Yeah. And don't try to explain nothing to nobody. Because if they're not up to speed with you, they'll say, but remember when you did that? Remember when you did that? Remember when you did that? And it's not very long before you're not feeling all that frisky. <laughs> Enough? Yes. Thank you. Really, thank you so much. Really good. <laughs> really good. <laughs>